sanctuary as well as those who are online. I want to say welcome to the online church. And anyone who may be visiting with us online for the very first time, welcome to our Wednesday night family Bible study here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We are coming to you live. Uh, welcome to those of you in the sanctuary. Saints, let's give our online guests a hand. Amen. We have people visiting with us online as well as here in the sanctuary, and we have the online church. Amen. So um, we pray that everyone is ready if you to go into our lesson for tonight. If you have your study guides, we're going to ask you to take them out. Um, the image of God, part two, faith of the new creature, uh, the study guide from School of the Prophets this year. So if you do not have that teaching material, you can still order that online simply by going to the website, BibleTeachers.com, MaryBanks.net and you can order uh, the study guide as well as the CDs or the DVDs along with that study. Amen. And tonight we have the Bible teacher herself here in the sanctuary live. Amen. Live. And we're going to be going further into our study of the faith of the new creature. How many has been enjoying the lessons? Amen. They are, I mean, we are really learning. Amen. And um, we're going to be going a little further tonight into our lesson. So during the lesson, if you have questions, we ask that you write them down. Uh, Apostle Banks will be entertaining your questions afterwards. Amen. So if you have questions during the lesson, you can write them down. Amen. All right. Let's put our hands together for the Bible teacher. Lord, bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. All right. Bless the Lord. Okay, we're going to go a little bit further. Uh, I think we're going to go a little bit further in our discussion of the salvation experience. I want to, I want to, I don't even know if I'm articulating this to where you can really understand it. Um, what, I, what I'm trying to, to, iterate to you um, but I'm going to try because in the last visitation in, in the last visitation that, that we had pretty God okay. in the last visitation um, the uh, Lord spoke to me about the concept and in fact, this coming world conference, I'm going to be teaching on the concept of salvation. So I'm going to give you the just a little brief, a little briefing of what I'm, what I mean when I talk about the concept. What the Lord is saying to me is that the 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 concept of salvation for the church, the the church's concept of salvation is wrong. We had it wrong as it relates to uh, teaching and uh, explaining scriptures relative to salvation. I've been preaching more than some of you have been in the world, and for many years I had it wrong. And then when the Lord visited us 30 years ago and started giving us the truth, when, when this ministry started 30 years ago and he started teaching us the truth and we, we embarked on that journey of truth and, and he brought us into what faith was, then he, he took us into what uh, the truth about suffering and then we, we uh, progressed to be perfect and all of those comprehending the length and all of those lessons that God has given us over the years, that made us very conscious of righteousness. We came to believe that we have to be holy. Did we not? That, that's one thing that, that, that the word that we've been hearing over the past few years, um, it, it did accomplish that in us. It made us know that we had to be holy and that we could not be presumptuous with our salvation and think that just because we had received the Holy Spirit, we could live any way we wanted to. We could sin and still make it in. Now, we came to appreciate holiness, and we taught holiness. Is that right? And, and uh, we embraced the fact 
that we have to be holy. Now, beyond that, you know, we were, we were grateful to receive the truth about perfection. We found out that uh, the definition God gave us of perfection was that we used to obey God every day and in all things. Is that right? If you choose to obey God one day, you can choose to obey him the next. So we can walk in perfection just like God expected Adam to be. Perfection simply means I choose not to sin against God. That's all perfection is. I choose not to sin against God. And we all have that choice. Isn't that right? Now, we, when we receive those, that word, you know, some of us struggled with it a while, but, but finally we embraced it and we, we took it to our heart. And most of us in this ministry, I mean, we're talking, you know, all, all the churches in Bible Teachers International, both in America and abroad, most of the saints in those churches have embraced that truth. Because one thing about Bible teachers, if you don't believe in walking in holiness, you won't stay in Bible teachers long. <laughs> you, won't, you won't stay there because that's what we preach. We preach holiness, right? And so, so we embraced that and, and we moved, you know, we, we moved into it wholeheartedly. You know, some of us, would, we were trying to really straighten up our lives and, and, and let our lives line up with the scriptures. All these things were good, God said. He said, these things were good. But back in 2014 at World Conference, he said, all of those truths that, that brought us to a consciousness of being holy, it achieved that in us, but we still did not understand salvation. And he said he was going to bring us understanding now, I believe that God is keeping his end of the bargain. He said he was going to do it, and ever since World Conference 2014, he's been giving us more and more clarity on, on salvation. Notice we've stayed with the image of God, um, faith of the new creature, the new man, all of that. That's where we've been almost a year now. Now, the other day, the Lord visited me, and he said, he said, it's the concept that is not clear. It is the concept that is not embraced yet. And I want to, I want to fixate right there. I want us to fix ourselves right there on the concept of salvation. Because if you don't embrace the concept of it, you'll never really understand the New Testament. Because the New Testament is a manifestation of the concept of salvation. And it's a manifestation of that concept. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, conceptually speaking, when we talk about concepts, okay, when we talk about the concept of something, if, 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 um, if we talk about Christianity, okay, and if you don't have a concept of what Christianity is, you'll never understand Christianity. Is that right? And people may teach you some of the, the principles of Christianity, but you, if you don't have that concept that Christianity uh, was founded by Christ and, and, and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you don't know all of that. You don't know the concept of it. You'll never understand it. Is, is that right? And, and that's where God say we are with salvation. Now, why is this so important? This is important because we are in the end time. We're not waiting on the end times. We're in the end time. And there's a small window, God said, that we have left to preach the gospel. And the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in every nation before the end can come. So before God raptures this church, the truth must be preached. Now, I don't want you to let the enemy fool you into thinking that, well, it's just arrogance for us to think that, you know, the church has been around for, for all these years, hundreds of years now, and, and even in your lifetime, we, you know, the, the church has been there, and, and, I, and here comes this woman that dare says that 99%, I would say 99, 98%, I don't know what God got in his quiver, but what I've heard as, as, as Christianity 
being preached as Christianity is not the concept of Christianity. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. And, and I've, I've, I've taught it, I've taught it, but I've got to make sure you understand it as a concept. Do you understand what I'm saying? What was in the mind of God? We need to talk about what was in the mind of God. So this is sort of a prelude to World Conference. It's sort of a prelude. You're getting like a sneak preview of World Conference because we need to understand what was in the mind of God relative to salvation, okay? And the reason why I'm fast forwarding here and going into this concept before I get to World Conference is because in order for you to understand some of the things that we're teaching now, I realize that I gotta go, I gotta go back and, and maybe if I teach the concept, maybe you'll understand the principles. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, hallelujah. Do we have a stand? You have a mic stand that I can use because I, I need my hands free. Um, if we, if, if, if now, if, if now we can go to, to, um, the seventh chapter of Romans. Let's go there. For those of you that have uh, your study guides, take, take your notes in chapter two or chapter three, amen, of your study guide. But we're mostly in chapter two. Chapter seven of Romans is the testimony of an unsaved man, right? So I, I want you to familiarize yourself with that chapter. Even after tonight, go home and read it and read it and read it and read it and read it. Start from the be starts from the beginning and read it and read it and read it. Okay? But I want you to familiarize yourself with it because uh, that is the scripture that is so butchered by many leaders when they try to teach salvation, they 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 have come up with dual nature to say that the a saint has the nature of God on the inside, but the nature of the devil on the outside, which is this flesh. We got God in the spirit, but we got the devil still living in our flesh. We got the nature of sin in our flesh. And that's the, that's the chapter that they use for, to, to um, confirm dual nature, which is, which is erroneous. There's no way that God is, is sharing a body with the devil. Amen? We understand that. But this is what I want you to see. Let me just talk to you a little bit about the concept of God, uh, the concept of salvation from God's perspective. I want you to think about something. I want you to, I want to, I want to prick your passion, okay? I want you to think about God the Father. Put your mind on God. Think about the Father. He made some statements in the Bible, and one of those statements was that he called for other gods, and there were none. There were none. He makes statements like he's the only true and living God. Hello? Only true and living God. Right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So, well, if he's the only God... If he is, if he is, if there is no other being in the universe that's likened unto him, then that means he was alone. He was alone, right? Now he had angels, right? He had, he had angels that... Uh, that he created and they worshipped him but they were not like him they were not as he is are you, are you following me they were not as he is so now that's, that was similar to let me show you something look at Adam when God made Adam he put him in this world and he created all the animals. And all the animals were subject to Adam, weren't they? Every one of them were subject to Adam. But now, there was not one animal that could relate to Adam. 
Who was it that Adam could talk to? Who was it that could understand Adam? He was alone. He was alone. And what did God say about him being alone? It ain't, that ain't good. I wonder where God get that from. Because he understood what it was like to be alone. He understood what it was like to be the only one of your kind. Are you, are you getting this? We're talking the concept here now. Because if, you, if we can understand this, and, and there's many scriptures, and, and, and as, as I said, when we get to World Conference, well, I'll take you through all the scriptures that, that bring us a lot of validity here. But, um, but just, you know, I'm on the peripherals now. But here this God is in the same condition Adam was in. He's the only one of his kind. He's the only one of his kind. So here, now, now let's compare him to Adam. Adam was, was made, it was put into a world that was beautiful. And you, you know, can you imagine God putting Adam in the garden that he designed? Can you, can you imagine what that garden looked like? If God himself designed that garden for his man to live in. But as beautiful as it was, and all the animals that came, and Adam giving them names and all of that, and they all subject to him. Everything on the planet was subject to Adam. Huh? But there was no one like Adam. God said, that ain't good. It's not good for man to be alone. In other words, I know how he feel. So God now gave him a helpmate. Amen? Now, I want you to see something. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, the, the Bible in, in Ephesians, I believe it's the first chapter. Glory to God. You guys bear with me here. Amen. Yeah. Um, um, Star, you don't have a mic, do you? No, okay, yes. Repeat again. You read. Um, Let's see, Ephesians, um, hmm, you guys know your Bible really well, don't you? Amen. He talks about something being the good pleasure of his will. Hmm. Ephesians 1 and 5. Now, back up to the third verse. Ephesians 1, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, no, include 6 as well. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places now in Christ. When, now, now, listen to what he says. He has already blessed us. Not that we're going to be blessed, right? But he's already blessed us with what? Spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. In heavenly places. He's all, now, 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 I need you to think about something here. If God has already blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places, how could we possibly take advantage of the blessing or be a partaker of the blessing if we are natural people. Because all, he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Now I need you to see something here, I, I'm, and I'm just going with the Holy Ghost here, because there's, 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 some, there's a concept here you need to understand. Notice what that scripture says. He has blessed us with what? How many? All spiritual blessings. Let me tell you what that means so that when next time you have to minister this, because what is the purpose of these, this discipleship? This discipleship is so that you'll know how to, how to minister this to someone, whether it be in a pulpit or whether you're one-on-one. -on -one. Amen? You need to understand. I want you to hold this, and I want you to get 2 Corinthians. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Coming right back. We're coming right back where we were. Glory to God. Uh, 
Look at the 17th verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All right. Therefore, if any man be where? In Christ. Read that again, please. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Okay. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Wait a minute now. What does that 18th verse say? How many things? How many things are of God? And what are the all things he's talking about? Who is that relating to? The new creature. Is that right? Now, 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 I told you the whole Ephesians, right? Okay, so now what do you have here? You got in this 18th verse here. Now, I want you to look at this, look at the 17th verse. See, I, I want you, I, let's stay with concept here, okay? Because we're coming, because you're going to need to understand this when we come, when we really put all, put the, trying to connect the dots. So make notes here. Take notes, real, really, really good notes. All right? Look at the 17th verse and look at the latter part where it says, now if any man is in Christ, we understand he's a new creature, right? Then it says, old things are passed away. Old things, old things. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something to you that I'll prove in a minute. I've, I've already proved it many times before, but I'm gonna prove it again tonight. Amen. We used to think and we often, we taught for years, we thought salvation, the concept of salvation was just the, the that, that when God came to save us, that he only dealt with the soul. Right? Hello? We thought God only dealt with the soul. We never included the flesh. We never included the flesh in any of the salvation operation. We never even talked about the flesh being, being saved. Come on, nobody ever talks about the flesh being saved. In fact, theologians tell us as long as we're in the flesh, we're gonna, as long as we're in this body, we're going to sin. Amen? So it's almost like God came in and he saved our soul, but he left us in a sinful vessel. That's the concept that the, that the church teaches of salvation. But that's not the concept the scripture teaches. So let's, let's get that straight first, okay? So we can connect these dots later, all right? The concept here is that, listen, listen to what God is saying here. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now that sets the subject matter. The subject is the new creature. Are, are you working with me? Are you, 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 you teachers out there, you know that, right? That's your subject matter now becomes a new creature. All things are passed away. What is he talking about? He's not talking about our old lifestyle, just our lifestyle, because we thought, oh, okay, he's talking about I don't drink anymore, I don't smoke anymore, I don't dip, flip, and all of that stuff, fornicate, don't do any of those things anymore. That's the extent that the church go with old things, right? But now if you look inside of Romans 6 and 6, what does it say? Quickly. You should know that. The sixth book, the sixth chapter, and the sixth verse, 666, is the death of Adam. What does it say? Okay. You don't have any problem dealing with the saving of the soul. But notice what that says. That says, knowing this, the old man, the old man was crucified. That's this flesh. That includes the flesh. Hello? Amen. Glory to God. See, you, see, the flesh is what makes us mankind. The flesh is what makes us mankind. Are you working with me? Huh? 
Without a body, you're not a man. You're not mankind. Okay? So now notice what it says. You, 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 you ministers, please get this so you can pass this on and, and you can reiterate these, 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 these um, principles here. Knowing this, that our what? Old man. Old man is what? Crucified with him. With him. That, that the what? The body of sin. That the body. The body. Physical body. Your physical body was crucified with Christ. And we'll find out how in the atonement. But the physical body was crucified. Now crucifixion is another word for what? Death. In fact, the, the, uh, the third verse says, as many as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his what? Death. Death. <laughs> Glory to God. So we died with him. Is that right? Okay. Now, notice this. This is, this is, this is a, a concept that I want you to get in your spirit so that you won't be entrapped or you won't be confused. When, people's, when people try to teach salvation and leave out any operation of God to the flesh, you can never leave that out again. you got to make sure that you include the flesh in the operation of God in salvation. That's the concept. That, that's one of the concepts that God wants us to see. Well, that's part of the concept that God wants us to see. And, and you would be surprised how hard it is to convince the church of that. Even though the scriptures are very clear here. It says, if any man be in Christ, any who? Any who? Any man, any man be in Christ. He is a new, he's a new creature, all right? In other words, God has made him a new creature. How did God make him a new creature? This is the soul. Remember this? This is the soul of a sinner. Right? Glory to God. So we know when Adam sinned, Ephesians 2 and 2 says, the spirit of the prince of the power of the air worked inside of man. That's the devil. Is that right? So the devil took charge of the soul and the flesh. And this is what we had. Right? Okay. You may wonder what this has to do with God being alone. I'm telling you in a minute. <laughs> but now this is what we had as a sinner. What do we talk about? Who? <clears throat> Before Adam sinned, this is what he looked like. His soul was in his body. This is his body. His soul is inside of his body. That is called what? No, it's not called. He had, this, was, this was before he sinned. What is this called? I can't hear you. This is in the flesh. In other words, man was a living soul. There's nothing in there but his soul. There was nothing in his body but his soul. He was a living soul. But then he sinned. Right? Jesus called the devil the strong man, came in and spoiled this. He corrupted mankind. Mankind became corrupt. Are you hearing God? Came corrupt. How did he corrupt mankind? He took possession because, now notice what the scripture said. He, he took, let me just go here. He took possession of the soul because inside this is the spirit man this is the spiritual man the inner man okay soul and spirit conscience mind spirit of the mind all of that that's what this is the soul houses all of that heart that, those are just other names for this inner man the devil took charge of it this is captivity because now the soul the, 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 the soul is too weak to fight he was no match for this spirit that took charge here. Are you, are you hearing God? He was no match. 
He was no match. Are you, are you, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? This, this is important. So now here, here now, I want, I, I, I want, I, I want to take, I want us to take our time. And if I say this, if I say it 50 times, needful. Because it, it may be that, that 49th time that you get it. <laughs> you, and you know why I keep saying it? Because, believe it or not, every time I do this demonstration, people think about sinning. They think about, why do I have to sin? I'm not captive anymore. They begin to understand. They begin to see what the enemy did and what God did. So what I want you to see now is that this is the soul, this is the inner man. This represents the inner man, right? When Adam was like this, he was innocent. But now notice something about Adam. He didn't have God either. God did not live in Adam. If God had been in Adam, Jesus would not have been the first begotten. Hello? So God was not in Adam. But now, what happened when Adam sinned? When Adam sinned, Ephesians 2 and 2 tell us that the spirit of Satan, prince, he called it, Paul called him the prince of the power of the air, which we know is the devil. He took charge of this soul, and rightfully so. He let God know, I got a right to this man. He, oh, he disobeyed you. I'm the author of sin. <laughs> Hello? He chose me over you. Is that right? So now the devil takes charge of the soul, spirit. How do I know this? Scriptures say even our conscience was dead in sin and trespasses. Isn't that right? And so we were not pow as powerful as this. Our soul and our conscience couldn't fight this devil. And then, now, he's in the flesh. He's in the body. He's living inside a man. Now, when I hold this up, this is the body here. Who's touching the body? Who's touching the body? The spirit of Satan. Is that right? The spirit of iniquity is touching the body. Now, what happened? This is a review. What happened when this spirit touches the body? When we, this is called captivity, right? What happened? What, where's the scripture? Before God came, Romans 7 and 5, put it on the screen, please. Romans 7 and 5, what does it say? For when we, we were, were where? In the flesh, mm -hmm. the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members. Okay. When we were in the flesh, absent of God, there's no God in here. So we in the flesh along with this in spirit, right? In other words, there's no God there. So this spirit now st started something working in the flesh. When it says, when we were in the flesh, what happened? The motions. What is another word for motions? Emotions. emotions. What is another word for that? Yeah. Affections. Desires. Mm -hmm. When we were in the flesh, the desires of sin or the emotions of sin worked where? In our body. In our body. Now, what is this called? When, when the devil now, listen, listen. when the devil, when the devil has control of the flesh, he starts a law. What is that law called? The law of sin and death. Where's the scripture? Where's the scripture? You got to prove it by scripture. I want everybody to look and tell me where that scripture is. Huh? 
Come on, scholars. We've been doing this for three days now. I want, I want, I want the scripture that says it's the law of sin. Okay. What does it say? Uh, Romans 7 and 23. What does it say? Read the 22nd verse first. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I, okay, what is he saying? Listen to, what, listen to what he's saying. He's saying that my soul, this is the inward man. Right? Hello? Do I have a class here? Yes. All right, this is the inward man, the soul and spirit, conscience, heart. The inner man delights in the law of God. But what? But I see another law in my members. I see another law working in my body. Work, I see, now, I know the Ten Commandments. I know what God say. I know it's wrong to defraud someone. I know it's wrong to hate. I know it's wrong to have iniquity. I know it's wrong to steal. I know it's wrong to fornicate. I know it's wrong to commit adultery. I know, I, and I delight in doing good and and, and what not I delight that I delight in it the law of God after the inward man but I see another law a law now he's not talking about no do's and don'ts here he's talking about a law he's talking about something that he's talking about the law in the sense that gravity is a law what goes up gotta come down he's saying that I see something working in my members that's stronger than me and as long as it's there I'm never going to be able to please God. I delight in the law of God, but that I see another what? Law. You're never going to change the law of gravity. What you got to do, you got to build something that has enough thrust to take you outside of the, of the earth's gravitational pull in order to be free of gravity. Right. So in other words, that thrust got to be stronger than the gravitational pull that holds you back here on earth. Is that right? And so that's what he's saying. He said, I see another law working in my members. I know that there's nothing in me that's strong enough to overcome this law. So as long as this thing is in me, and he told you what it was. Did he tell you what it was in that same chapter? The law of sin working in my members. So this thing, this devil that's living in my flesh, notice what he said, back up. Back up here, I know I keep jumping around here for these, these readers, but um, notice what he says in the 16th verse. He says, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but what? But sin that does what? Sin is doing what? It's living in me. It's dwelling in me. Dwell means it lives. This thing lives and it doesn't just live it works it work is working its law it's working its law of sin and death he's doing what the devil does come on i say he's doing what the devil does wherever you find the devil he is working sin and sin when it is conceived bring forth death are you working with me? So he's saying, I see this law working in my members. And it brings me into what? Captivity. So, it, so when Jesus said, I came to set the captives free, this is what he was talking about. I came to free you from this. Because this thing working in your body, you cannot help yourself. You're not strong enough. This is a strong man. And no one can free you except he be stronger than the strong man so he can spoil his house. You see that? So Jesus said, now, I can't send Gabriel or Michael or none of them. I got to come myself and do that. Because this, this devil is strong. And he has taken over mankind. We got that? Now, this is like day number four that we're teaching this. <laughs> Amen. And week number, I don't know what. But I keep teaching it over and over. I want you to see it. Because, because from here, we're going to jump into to, to the concept. But I want to make sure you can connect the dots. Okay? Now, did we finish that scripture that you was 
Where were you? You were in the Romans 7? Yeah. Okay. You were 7 and 20, 22. I delight in the law of God after the end with man, but what? But I see of mother law in my members, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. The law of sin is where? Tanya, don't forget this. The law of sin is in the members. It's in the flesh. It's working in the flesh. And it can work because the, the soul is under captivity. It's in darkness. Right? So the law of sin can work in the body. Now, now why is that important? Because what is the purpose of the body? To express whatever is going on on the inside of it. Come on. To express the spirit that is in control. Whatever spirit is in control on the inside of the body, that's what the body is going to express. Are you, are you working with me? If it's the spirit of God that's, that we allow to be in control, then that's what we're going to express. Righteousness. But if it's the spirit of the devil that's in control, guess what we're going to express? Sin and iniquity. Are you, are you hearing God? Y'all scare me. <laughs> this is so important because I'm trying to, I'm taking my time. I'm going back through, I'm going back through things that we've been preaching and teaching for the last few days because we got, I got to make you, I want it stuck in you. I want it stuck so that now it'll be easy to connect the dots. Okay. It's going to be easy. Okay. Watch this. We were in Romans 7 and, and 23. He says, I see I see this law warring against the law of my mind. I see another law in my members, in my body. It wars against the law of my mind. When you see mind here, it's the soul. That's synonymous with soul. The soul is the spirit of the mind. Okay? Are you working with me? Amen. Now, bringing me into what? Captivity to what? Now, now, look at this. This is really something. I see a law working in my body. This, this law that's working in my body, my members, is bringing everything about me into captivity to the law of sin. I am in captivity to the law of sin. I'm condemned. I'm just condemned for hell. I'm just unrighteous, just unholy can't please God. When I would do good, evil is present. Isn't that the testimony of this unsaved person? Yeah. Glory to God. Now, before we go any further, how do we prove that this is an unsaved person? What scriptures did we use to prove that Romans 7 is the testimony of an unsaved individual? What scriptures do we use? Because, and this is why this is important. Look, let me get your attention a minute. Let me tell you why this is important. Because you will talk to people and they will tell you that as long as you are in the flesh, you will sin. They're going to tell you that as long as you're in the flesh. And let me tell you, that's bigger than you think. And you know why I'm reiterating that and why I'm focusing there so much? Because most of you have been in Bible teachers and you have been sheltered from a lot of false doctrine. But when you get out there in, that, in, 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 in Christendom, people are going to hit you hard with, with dual nature. They're going to hit you hard with this erroneous grace doctrine that says you, once you're saved, you're always saved. You can't lose your salvation. You're gonna, no matter what you do, you can be a fornicator, you can be an adulterer, and you're still going to go to heaven. They're going to hit you with that. And they're going to have all kinds of scriptures to throw at you. You've been sitting in here in a controlled environment for years, listening to truth, listening to, to things that God himself has been feeding us. But what's going to happen when you go out there now in Christendom and you don't know the scriptures, you don't even know how to deal with the scriptures that they're going to they're hit you with. 
That's why you got to know your Bible. You got to be just as diligent as the Jehovah Witnesses are. You can't beat them talking. You can't, t- you can't move them off of what they believe. I don't care what you say, they're not moving from what they, what they believe. You got to be just that fervent. But you got to know what you're talking about. You got to know what you're talking about. You cannot assume because you know the truth that you can convince everybody of it. You got to be able to convince people of the righteousness of God and the truth of God. Amen. Without condemning them. Without judging them. Amen. Glory to God. So now, what was my point? What is the scripture that, what it, give me just uh, the, 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 give me one scripture, there are many, but one scripture that proves that Romans the seventh chapter is the testimony of an unsaved man. Which one? Okay, that's a good one. Okay, what, what verse is that, Tanya? Verse 14. Okay, what does it say? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Okay, now tell me what saint is sold under sin. If you sold under sin, you're not saved. And if you're carnal, (laughs) something's wrong here. Sold under sin, sold under sin means you're captive by sin. So if you're still captive by sin, what did... Jesus come to set free. What, what are you free from? If you're still sold under sin, what are you free from? That's a very good scripture. Give me another one. Romans 7 and 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members. Now this whole chapter is about being in the flesh. Look here. Right in the middle of him... Uh, in, in, in the middle of his um, in the middle of his testimony watch this now notice what Romans 7 and 5 says for when we were where in the, in the flesh what happened the motions of sin which were by the law did what work in our members bringing forth fruit unto what is the fruit of unto death sin right when, when we were in the flesh Something was working in our members that brought forth fruit or brought forth sin. That's the law of sin. Is that right? Now, watch this. In the middle of his testimony here, it says, When we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, glory to God. Now, look at this in the 18th verse. He says, For I know that in me where? In my what? flesh dwelleth no good thing. In my flesh is dwelleth no good thing. Why? Because the motions of sin is in my flesh. This thing is working a law in my members. So there's nothing good about my flesh. That's what he's saying. This is, what, this is an unsaved man. How do I know he's unsaved? Because this fifth verse says when we were where? In the flesh. Now how do I prove that we're not in the flesh? Romans 8 and what? Eight and nine, what is, read read the eighth verse, eight and eight, what does it say? So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so those who are where? In the flesh. In the flesh. Give me some excitement, Miss Reader. (laughs) (laughs) Those that are in the flesh cannot cannot what? Please God. Now, what does the ninth verse say? But ye are not in the flesh. Oh, wow, you got some expression there. Amen. You're not where? In the flesh. You, wait a minute now. You are not in the flesh. So this don't pertain to you. You're not in the flesh. Where are you? In the spirit. But where? In the spirit. In the spirit. How so? If so. If so be that the spirit of God is in you. So everyone that has the spirit of God in them is not where? In the flesh. Where are they? In the spirit. So that means that I am not in this thing. I am over here in the spirit. And the spirit is in my flesh. 
You see that? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in this thing here. Mm -mm. This is gone. This is gone. How did this leave? What's the, what's the, what's the process that God got rid of this law of sin? What is it called? Circumcision of what? Of the flesh. Where is the scriptures found? Colossians what? Two and ten through thirteen. Colossians two, ten through thirteen. That's the circumcision of the flesh. You never hear preachers preach it. That doesn't say that they haven't preached it. That somebody somewhere is not preaching it. But I'm saying we have not heard it preached. We have not heard of the circumcision of the flesh. We hear the circumcision of the heart, circumcision of the spirit. We never heard preachers. I never heard. I'm just saying me. I've never heard anyone but God preach the circumcision of the flesh. Because theologians never included the flesh in salvation, in the salvation experience. This is important. Are you there? So God circumcised the flesh. And, and um, look, um, after the circumcision, because you can go and read Colossians 2, uh, 10 through 13, when you get a chance just to know, to prove that that's where the, the, the scriptures are on the circumcision of the flesh. But let me show you the resort where God, after the flesh has been circumcised, let me show you that God included it. Look at 2 Thessalonians 5.23. What does it say? Madam? 2 Thessalonians 5.23. You mean first? Oh, is it 1 first, first Thessalonians? I'm sorry. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. The, wait, 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 what's say? And the very God of peace uh -huh. sanctify you wholly. Holy. <laughs> and I pray. <laughs> <laughs> and I do what? And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. That's what I want to hear. Amen. Your whole what? Your whole spirit, soul, and what? And body? You mean the body supposed to be blameless? Blameless mean without sin. Preserved without sin. Now, we always saw the soul as preserved. Come on. But not the body. Come on. Are y'all working with me? We saw the soul as preserved, but we never talked about the body being preserved preserved glory to God preserved how long until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ so you mean to tell me God expects that after salvation our body should be preserved blameless meaning without sin until Jesus come back in other words he has circumcised the flesh circumcised the heart preserved got the soul hid in him and then he said, now the body got to be preserved. The body is preserved as well. I've cleaned the body, and I'm going to preserve it. That's where we got to go right there. How does God preserve the body? You understand how he preserves the soul because the soul, what did the scripture tell us? Galatians 2 and 20, what does it say? It says what? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, Yet but not, I, but not I, but but Christ liveth in me, mm -hmm. and the life which I now live, the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God. Okay, now watch this. <sighs> Glory to God. This is where we are. The preservation of the soul you got, but we never preach the preservation of the body. We preach the circumcision that the flesh has been made clean. I want you to see 
how the flesh now is going to be preserved just like the soul is hidden what does the scripture say what is the scripture our life is hid with Christ in God Colossians what three and three read that Colossians three and three that's the one I was looking for what does it say for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God okay now that's the scripture I want us to look at oh hallelujah hallelujah as as prophetess Tompkins says it's getting good and good <laughs> amen you are dead you're dead and your life is hid with Christ so my life is my soul that's what's going to spend eternity somewhere this is the being in him we live and move and have our being I am not in the flesh and let's, 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 let's do something like this let's do this let's make this my body your body our body right I'm not in the flesh where am I? Where are you? If you're, if you're born again, where are you? Your being is where? In Christ. In, with Christ rather. In who? This is God now. Look at that. You're in God. You're, you're with Christ. You're with Christ, and Christ is where? In God, which is the Holy Ghost, and God is where? Holy Ghost is where? In your body. Do you see this? This is your body. This is the Holy Ghost or God. This is Christ. This is you. You are hidden with Christ in God and they are in your body. The devil can't touch that. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in you. God and Christ live inside a man in the personage of the Holy Ghost do you have that do you understand that okay now let's look at concept here help me Holy Ghost what was God's intent in from the very beginning Go to Ephesians 1. <clears throat> uh, before we go there, let's go to Romans 7 and 24. Because we just discovered that our body was one of sin, right? Okay, let's, let's, let's look at it like it was before. It was a body of sin. Let's understand. Read 7 and 24. So we can... O oh, wretched man that I am, mm -hmm. who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Okay, now remember we said this was originally our body, right? This jar here was our body. And this devil, spirit of iniquity, lived in the body. And we were inside of it, right? Captive. Now, he had a law working in this body, right? The law of sin. So now the question is this, in the 24th verse, what is it? What's the question? Oh, wretched man, oh, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Okay, oh, what kind of man? Wretched. Oh, what kind of man? Wretched. Wretched man. Who's going to deliver me from this body? Body. B-O-D-Y. Body. Your physical body. 
My physical body was a body of sin in this condition. Are we there? Who is going to deliver me? I need deliverance. Now, and that's why I don't understand why theologians hold so fast and want to fight so much and say that this seventh chapter is about a saved man. If he was already saved, why is he asking for deliverance? If he's saved, why is he wretched? Why is he so wretched? And why does he need deliverance if he's already saved? He's saying, who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? Because as long as I am in this body, th there's no good thing in it. Look at this. This thing is working in my members. Sin, there's a law of sin in my members. Somebody got to deliver me from this body. Look at your neighbor and say, we needed deliverance from our body. Because even though we delighted in the law of God after the inward man, and this is where some people are, they think because they're good churchgoers and they know the Ten Commandments and they teach Sunday school and they're diligent about going to church, they delight in the law of God, but there's a law working in their members. No matter how good we thought we were, we were not good enough for the kingdom because there was a thing living in us. We inherited this thing from Adam. Satan got in the seed and passed sin down to every creature. And that's where every child was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And that shaped in iniquity is referencing the body. That's what shaped in iniquity references. It's talking about the body. The shape of iniquity is our body. Born in sin, meaning our soul was captive in sin and our body was a body of iniquity. Iniquity is anything, any sin, or anything that separates you from God. That's what iniquity is. Any sin that separates you from God. Any sin. Anything you do that separates you from God, that's iniquity. It's not just, I don't like her, or I'm not speaking to her. I'm holding this against her. It's not just unforgiveness. It's anything, any sin, iniquity. All sin is iniquity. Okay? All sin is iniquity. So who is going to deliver me from this body? Come on, somebody say, I needed deliverance from my body. Because no matter how much I delighted in God, have you ever been where you wanted to do the right thing, but somehow, somehow you just ended up doing the wrong thing? You wanted to be good, but there were still some sins we did. And we could, we could look at ourselves and say, well, I ain't as bad as she is, and I don't do what that one does, but we were still sinners. We still had some kind of sin. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. So this man says, this seven chapter man says, somebody need to deliver me. But I don't want you to miss this. I'm going to say it. I'm going to shout it from the house top if I have to. Who is going to deliver me from this body of sin? So the question is, why are we not hearing theologians tell us of our deliverance from the body? When did it happen? Did we get deliverance from the body of sin? Because if we didn't, then that, that, that means or that proves that the church will always keep sinning because it never got deliverance from the body of sin. It still has a body of sin. So why are theologians not telling us? And this is not a slander because... I preached the gospel for many years and didn't tell nobody that because I didn't know myself. <laughs> Why were he not telling? God has to reveal these things. Amen? We don't hear it preached that we were delivered from our bodies, that our body was, re was delivered. Otherwise, if it wasn't delivered, how could God t command, demand that it be preserved blameless? So if I, if I get saved today and live another 40 years, he expect me never to sin in my body. He said, preserve it blameless. So what did he do to preserve it? I couldn't preserve it. Huh? So God had to do something to preserve the body so that the body would not be a body of sin anymore.
Hello? Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me explain this. What did God do? Well, Romans 6. Well, well, I'm sorry, before you go there, look at the, look at the 25th verse. What does that 25th verse say? I thank God. Oh, really? I thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, wow. I thank God that there was Jesus Christ. Jesus came along. Now, notice what it says here. This is another scripture that trips up theologians as well. And I don't want you to get tripped up by it. Look at, the, look at the bottom part of this scripture because we got tripped up here for years, okay? And let's just thank God for truth. Amen? Glory to God. Look what it says here. So then with the, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. With the soul or the mind, I serve the, in other words, glory to God. If my soul or, <clears throat> or the spirit of my mind is in the spirit, I can serve the law of God. Mm -hmm. But with the flesh. But if I'm in the flesh. The law of sin. I'm going to serve the law of sin. Yes. That's all that is saying. If I'm, in the, if, I'm in, if I'm here, I'm going to serve the law of God. If my mind is in here. My soul is in the spirit. I'm going to serve the law of God. But if my mind, if my soul, mind, soul, same thing, is here in the flesh, I'm going to serve the law of sin. Yes. Can't help it. You got that now? That's not a scripture that's, that's confirming dual nature. Because that's what they use it to say. That I serve the law of God after, with the mind and then I serve the body, I'm going to serve sin. That's not what that is saying. That's a contradiction. You're still a captain. If that's the case, you're still a captain. And you, you know where you're at? You're back here in this verse <clears throat> where it says, I see another law warring. Where it says, uh, glory Born to God. against the law of my mind. Right. What verse is that? 23. Verse 23. I see another law warring against the law of my mind. So you're not there. That, that you're, there's no war going on inside of you if you say. The only time if there's a war going on inside of you is because you're trying to rebel against God. You're creating a war. There's no devil living in you now that's got a war going on in your flesh and, and then the God is in your spirit and then the devil living in the flesh and, glory to God, and they fighting one another. That's just not true. God is not going to share no house with no devil. Amen. Come on, are you working with me? Amen. He called this body the temple of the Holy Ghost. But now the question is, how did God preserve the body? How did he preserve it? See? The scripture says, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> what you need to know as scholars, how he did it. And you need to know that it was done. Because most people will think you are off your rocker when you tell them that the body was preserved against sin. When you preserve something, you know, people, the, 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 my, my grandmother and my mother, they used to do canning. They used to take, take, uh, fruits and beans and vegetables and stuff like that and can them. They put them in jars and, and they had certain, they, certain type of jars though, right? They had these lids on them that kept all the air out, right? And those things would sit on the shelf a year and, and, and wouldn't spoil because nothing could get to it. No air could get to it, so there was no oxidation. Amen? So, so they were able to preserve it. That, they was, that's what canning is, preserving. They're preserving that fruit. They don't let nothing get to it. Right? Nothing gets to it. Now, <clears throat> let's see how God preserved the flesh. Look in Romans 8, where we were. <clears throat> Hallelujah. This is how he preserved the flesh. Oh, my God. 
Let's read. You, you read the ninth verse. Read it again. And the tenth. Read the ninth and tenth verse. But ye are not in the flesh. So but we're not where? In the flesh. In the flesh. Where are we? But in the spirit. We're in the spirit. If uh -huh. so. If. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Uh-huh. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is non, none of his. Now, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. Is that right? Yes. Now that's for those people that gave their hand to the preacher and he just said you were told you you were saved but you didn't have no experience with God. Don't believe that. In order for you to be saved, God got to come into you. He's got to come and live in you. Right. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay, now watch this. Watch this now. You're not in the flesh. We got that, didn't we? Where are we? In the spirit. In the spirit. Right? If so, be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, read the 10th verse. And if Christ be in you. Now, if Christ is in you. The body is dead because of sin. Okay. Now, here's Christ. Here's Christ. I'm not, Yeah. This is the Holy Ghost. I mean, I'm sorry, this is Christ, Jesus, Spirit of Christ, right? Which is the, actually, this is soul of Christ, the soul of Christ. You're in Christ, who is in God, right? Who is where? In the body. So this is what we look like. That's what we look like now. This is our body. This is God. That's Christ, and we somewhere way down there hidden. You can't even see us. Our life is hid with Christ in God. Is that right? Now, I want to ask a question right here, but I don't know if this is the place to ask it. Notice what this says. If Christ be in you, the what? Body is dead. That body? Is dead. That body that was this body yeah. is dead because of what? Yeah. You know what that means? It means it was slain because of sin. It was slain in the atonement, in the propitiation. How does he explain it? He explains it in the sixth chapter. The operation of the body being dead. This is what he means. <clears throat> the third verse. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Mm -hmm. Read Therefore, on. we are buried with him by baptism into death. We are buried with him by baptism into into death, uh-huh. That like as Christ raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Okay, now watch this here. Read the fifth verse. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Read the sixth verse. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, mm -hmm. the that the body of sin might be destroyed. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Glory to God that the body of sin might be destroyed. What else he say? That henceforth we should not serve sin. In the seventh verse. For he that is dead is freed from sin. He that is dead is what? Freed from, from sin. sin. And, and number eight. Now if we be dead with Christ, mm -hmm. we believe that we shall also live with him. Oh my God. Now watch this here. This is what all of this is saying in a nutshell. Woo, Jesus. God is just so good to us. 
this is what he's saying. He's saying the old man, this body, our body, was crucified with Christ. He said, no, no he said, know ye not that the old man was crucified. Now, if the old man, he said, now, because we were sinners, the price of sin had to be paid, which was death. And he's saying in the propitiation, in the atonement, which I'm not going to get into details tonight. We'll do that at work conference. But in the, in, the, in the propitiation, Christ dying for us on the cross, in that atonement, he's saying our flesh was crucified with his flesh. He's saying, and just like Christ rose from the dead, so did our body rise from the dead. Now, notice, but this is what he's saying. There's a, there's a space right there. He's saying, this is what he's saying. If this be the body right here, this be your natural body when it was in sin, right? When this thing here was in it, right? He's saying, when I, when I died for you, I took this out. I took your soul out because your soul was in there too, remember? I took, because you're no longer in the flesh, where are you? I took you out and put you in here, and I killed this. Because this had to die. So at salvation, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, your whole body died. Oh, y'all don't hear me. The body actually died. That's why, glory to God, when we got the Holy Ghost, we felt, we came alive, we felt so light, and we would just, we, and we try to get back that experience. You can't get that because you died and rose from the dead. That's what the sixth chapter is teaching you. He's saying when you receive Christ, your flesh actually died. That's what he's saying. Oh, you got to get this. Because this, now we come into the concept of salvation. You got to get this. He's saying your physical body actually died. It died dead. Graveyard dead. It just happened so quickly. By the time you can blink your eye, you were dead and risen. And then he said, now what did I do? I put your soul in me. And look at, look at, look at Romans 8 and about 15. Romans 8 and 15. Notice what he says. This is important. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, mm -hmm. but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay, now, now that you should have really got excited about that one. Glory whereby God. we cry, <laughs> Abba, Father. Now watch this. This is what he said. You, when, when you died, this is what he's saying. When this died, because remember where we were? We were here, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This thing had our body messed up. But he said, now, nah, I got rid of this for you. You couldn't get rid of this devil out of you, but I got him out. And when I got him out, I took you out too. I took everything out of this body. And it's dead now. A dead man don't feel nothing. He has no power. He has no emotion. He has no desires. He don't know nothing. And he can't do nothing if there's no spirit in him. So God said, I, not only did I take the devil out of you, I took you out of the flesh, put you in the spirit. Glory to God. Put you into Christ. Put Christ, Christ was in God. And then now this body was dead. You done paid. Now you, done been, you become a partaker of the atonement. See, your body got to die in order for you to be a partaker of the atonement. But God say, I'm God. Glory to God, I can kill you and raise you up again. Yeah. Come on, somebody. That's what Romans 6 is saying. God said, I killed that man, and I raised him from the dead. But when I get in here and raise him up, yes, I want you now, before I raise it up, let me tell you something. When I raise him up, you reckon him is still dead. Uh -huh. For you, he dead. Uh -huh. For me, he's alive. Yes, I'm raising him up to be alive unto me. To serve me. You can't use him to serve you no more. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, are y'all hearing God? You cannot use him to serve you and your desires and your wants and, and all of that. You don't have no authority over this no more. I got the authority because I raised it up. And guess what? It's the temple of the Holy Ghost now. It belongs to me. Does not the scripture say the body belongs to God now? Come on, somebody. 
said the body belongs to God. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. He said, now don't you take the, this temple and go join it to a harlot or go out there and drink, become a drunkard. He that defiles the temple of God, him I will destroy. Yeah. Did not he say that? Yeah. Now he's saying this. Oh, you got this one right here now. You, you understand this one right here. Because there's a scripture. Y'all find it. Says he, us, the being, that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. Is that right? So now this is the new creature. This is a new creature because I'm not what I used to be. You can't separate me from this, from him now. Come on. I'm joined to the Lord. I'm joined to the Lord. And the only thing that can separate me from God is the word. The word is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide soul and spirit. This is my spirit now. I'm joined to God. I'm one spirit. I'm one with God. Father, make them one as we are one. Glory to God. I'm in you, you and me, and they in us. So we are in them. We hid somewhere in them. Hid with Christ in God. He said, now you reckon this is dead. That's the new creature. So what is this? What is this? A new man. Now, he's a new man. He ain't your man. Do you, you, are you getting this? God say, this is how the flesh is preserved. I live in it. I live in it. It's my temple. And notice what he said in one of the most important verses. Not to forget, Romans 8, 15, 8, 15 what he said, you have not received what? You didn't, get the, you didn't receive this spirit again. Mm -hmm. To do what? To, to fear. fear. You don't have to. You didn't get. You didn't. Glory to God. At salvation, this spirit couldn't come back in. Because this is the thing that made you sin. He started a law working in your members. Remember? He said, you don't have to fear this anymore. Because I got rid of him. I cleaned this flesh up. I circumcised it. Col uh, Colossians 2. 2. 10 through 13, I circumcise this flesh for my purposes. I, the reason I circumcise is because I don't put new wine in the old vessels. It couldn't contain it. This is a new man. Now, hold on. Better fasten your seatbelts. Because didn't he say he had to be preserved? Didn't he say this new man, this, the whole soul, spirit, soul, and body be preserved how that means sinless how long to the coming of our Lord go to first John hallelujah you guys are getting it see I'm supposed to be doing my lesson for Monday night you guys getting it <laughs> glory to God are you are you hearing God? Now, are you are you are you are you working with me here? Look at First John the third chapter. Now, watch this here. Woo wee! Oh God! Look at the. Let's start reading at the fifth verse. First John three and five. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In who? Jesus Christ. In who? Christ. In Christ Jesus is what? No. no sin. All right, read. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. All right, whoever lives in Jesus don't sin, right? Mm -hmm. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, mm -hmm. neither know him. They don't know him. Read. Little children. No, 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 no. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Little children, let no man deceive you. Okay, now, now, now he's getting down to some nitty gritty here. Look at what he's saying here. He, don't, don't be deceived. Cause, see, he's trying to show you something. He's trying to show you in the first two verses she just read. 
she's, he's trying to show you that you can live holy. That's what he's saying. He's saying you can live holy. Now he's going to show you why. He said, don't let nobody deceive you now. He, 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 he doing a, uh, he turning the page here. He turned the page. He's taking you into salvation. He's, he's taking you right into it. Don't let nobody deceive you. You need to know this, he's saying. Read. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Okay. Even as he is righteous. Okay. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Uh-huh. For the devil sinneth not from the beginning. No, he sinneth from, from the beginning. From the beginning, sorry. Uh-huh. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now watch this. He's saying, good God Almighty. He's saying that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy this thing, to get this thing out of you. That was the work of the devil. So he said, and what was the work of the devil? This thing was living in us and, and, and started a law in our flesh. Did not this, the, the, did not this, the man cry out, who, who's going to deliver me? I'm a wretched man. Who's going to deliver me from what? From this what? Body. He said, I came to destroy the work that the devil did in your body. Come on, somebody. Not only in your soul, but in your body. Don't you be deceived now. See, see, it's deception to think that your body is still sinful, and that's why you got to keep sinning. If it wasn't for this body, I could live holy. He said, that's a lie. Don't be deceived by that. Don't be deceived by that. You can live holy. And he's, he's showing you why. That's what he's doing now. He's about to show you why you can live holy. Glory to God. Look at this. He said, the devil sinned from the beginning. He said, but now watch this here. Watch this here. Who so, he said... Um, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy who? The works, the works of the devil. What does manifested mean? Revealed or made known. Right? He was manifested. The son of God. Now, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want you to insert this in your notes. The son of God, Jesus Christ, was the model saint. He was the model of what a saint supposed to be. His life from, the, from birth to death, his life was a model of what a saint supposed to be. His, his makeup was that of a saint. Are you hearing me? He was the first saint. He's the first saint. Are you hearing God? And everything, that's why the scriptures say, as he is, so are we. It didn't say, as he is, we're almost as he is. It didn't say that. It says, as he is, so are we. Right? Now watch this here. Look at this ninth verse. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Mm -hmm. For this, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now watch this here. This is something that we never did see. We didn't talk about this. See, this is what he's saying. Watch this. How were you born again? Can a man be born again? He got to go back into his mother's womb. Isn't that what Nicodemus likes? So if he don't have to go back into his mother's womb, how is he born again? He got to die. Oh, y'all here in God. Are you, are you hearing God? He got to die first. So what happened? The soul now departs from the body, goes into the spirit, but the body died. Is that right? The body died. Glory to God. I'm sweating bullets up here with the, trying to teach this. Glory to God. So the, the body is dead, right? Now, this is what we didn't minister because we didn't understand it. God is saying you never, you didn't understand this. You, you preached it a while for, for many, many years. You preached it, but you really didn't understand it. So let me give you some understanding here. He says, the body died at salvation. Present your body a living what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice is dead. 
keep your body as far as you're concerned is dead to you. You can't, you, you, it's as, hallelujah. What is he saying? It's no longer yours. But now, it's dead to you, but just like he said, but it's alive unto who? Unto God. Sixth chapter Roman. He resurrected it. He, he, he got in it. God got in it. He resurrected that body. For his own purpose. So if the body was dead and it was resurrected, then what happened? Jesus was dead in the tomb. And the Bible says, this day I have done what? Begotten you again. So Jesus was born again. Why was he born again? Because he was raised from the dead. So you died. You were born again from the dead. Your body was born again. Nobody told us our body was born again. But Nicodemus asked Jesus, how the man going to be born again? How the man, the man. He's, and what did Jesus say? That which is born of the flesh is the flesh. In other words, glory to God, that human spirit that was in you, that's flesh. But that which is born of the spirit, if this is going to come back alive, it's got to come back by the spirit. Yeah. And now this is born of the spirit now. Yeah. Glory to God. The flesh is born of the spirit. In other words, it's the Holy Ghost that's got your body alive now. Yeah. Glory to God. It's the Holy Ghost. That body you in is going to stay alive as long as the spirit of God is in it. Because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of life. And you cannot, glory to God, that body going to live as long as the Holy Ghost is in it. The Holy Ghost got to get out of that body in order for it to die. That's why Jesus could not die until he gave up the ghost. Glory to God, you cannot die until God take the ghost out of you. Are y'all hearing God? God got to get out of this body for it to die again. So he said, now this is born again. Now watch what he said. Watch, watch this. This is so good. Watch what he says here. Whoever is born of God don't commit sin. This is what he's trying to tell you. This body can't sin no more. Before we got saved, hallelujah, when we were here, we were complaining because the body was full of sin. In the, in the seventh chapter of Romans, what is he complaining about? The body of sin. The body of sin. This body just keeps sinning. It just keeps sinning. I can't help myself. When a word do good, evil is forever present. God is saying, this now. When I say, when I raise it from the dead, when I resurrect the flesh this time, my spirit is in the flesh. Look what he's saying here. He gets very specific. He said, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his what? Seed. His what? Seed, Seed does what? Remain, Remain where? In him. in him. In where? In the flesh. God, who is touching the flesh? God is touching the flesh. He said, my spirit remaineth in that flesh so that it cannot what? Sin because he is what? Born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. I, I, I don't have time to go that glory there. Glory to God. My time up. But glory to God. He said, in this, if God is in this flesh, Glory to God. If God raised this flesh from the, from, from the dead, and he called it his now. He called it the temple of the Holy Ghost. He called it a holy habitation. He called it his body. Glory to God. If God said this is his body, he said, my seed remain in there, and that body cannot sin on its own no more like it did before. It sinned against you before. The devil had it sinning against you. That can't happen anymore. That can't happen anymore. You were helpless before because whatever the devil wanted your flesh to do, that's what happened. But you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to have to fear that happening again. Glory to God, because I live in it and it cannot sin. Why? Because God cannot be tempted with sin. Come on, somebody. God cannot be tempted with sin. God does not sin. Sin is not a temptation for God. Are y'all hearing God? So he said, don't you dare again say your body is the reason you sin. Because your body belongs to me. No, when you sin, it's because you usurp authority. You, this, this person right here, says, I want to use this body to do what I want to do. And you rebel 
against your own flesh that belongs to God. You rebel against. The Bible say you 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 deli- teach them how to deliver themselves from the snare of the devil. Deliver yourself from the snare. You give you, we willingly give ourselves over. He said you are captive of whom you yield your members to. If you don't, because see, God is not going to force you here. He said, even though the body belongs to me, I'm not going to force you now. Yeah. Why am I not going to force you? Because I'm, I, you got to be proven worthy of the kingdom. So I'm going to give you choice. I'm not going to take your choice from you. I'm going to see if you choose me. Because you say, you, say, you say you didn't have no choice because Adam got you into this thing. Now I'm giving you choice. Yeah. I'm giving you a choice. Now, I, I've, I've gotten rid of that, that thing that, that, that brought Adam down. It's gone. There's no sin. There's no evil concupiscence in your flesh anymore. It's been circumcised. I am there to preserve the flesh. I will keep it holy. The devil can't come in here. There's no way the devil going to come in here and live not with me. Say, God, he's not coming in here. He can't touch this. This body belongs to me. This is my habitation. And that was my plan in the beginning. From the very beginning, to have himself a holy habitation. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain the concept I started to show you. This was the purpose in the beginning. God was alone. He wanted children. God is a what? Spirit. He lives in a spiritual environment. The Bible said there are thrones and dominions that in the heavens that you can't even see. You get in a in a in a in a rocket and uh, uh, whatever, whatever those things that they go to the moon with satellites and all that, you still can't see the angels out there. You can't even see the cities that's 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 up there in the second heaven. You can't see none of that. You can't see the, all those angels that's flying around up there. You can't see that there are many cities and thrones and dominions in the heavens. Glory to God. Right up in the in the in what we call outer space. You you travel through there. Glory to God. They sent up. Jets and, and well, no, they no, some greater than a jet, rockets, whatever, spaceships go through it. They can't see nothing because they're spiritual beings. But God created planet Earth for Himself. He, want, being a spirit, wanted to live in a physical environment. I want you to think about your your father. He wanted to live in a physical environment. At the end, what is he doing? He's taking his throne out of heaven and bringing it to the earth. Glory to God. He wants to dwell in a physical environment, and he wanted some. He wanted, glory to God, he, he wanted to interact. He wanted, he wanted beings that were his kind. So he had to beget them. And Jesus was his method of begetting them. Glory to God. So we are the only people that the angels can't relate to God like we can. Let me show you something. When God did this, who's touching the flesh? Did he not give you his emotions? Why is it that he say forgive? He's saying because I'm here, don't tell me now iniquity is more powerful than me. You can love your enemy now because you got my spirit. You just like me. Only creatures in the universe that's like him. Oh, y'all on him. I say we the only creatures in the universe that can relate to God and how he feel about things. The world don't even understand it. The world don't understand how we can forgive an enemy. How we can love those that despitefully use us. The world don't understand how we can rejoice when, when we don't have nothing. We can still say God is good. The world don't understand that. Why? Because we don't have the world's emotions anymore. We don't have the human emotions anymore. We have the emotions of the spirit. Are y'all hearing God? We're the only creatures. That's why he say, do you know that you're the only creatures in the universe that I will demand that the angels and all of the Gentiles bow down and worship you? Do you know that they will worship us? The scriptures say so. Do you know that we will judge the angels? Scriptures say so. Why? Because we just like God. 
82nd Psalm says, God stood up in the congregation of the righteous and said, ye are gods. But if you don't believe it, you'll die like men. That's what he said. He said, now this is who you are. 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 Glory to God, this is who you are. He said, now, glory to God, I desire to live in a physical environment, and I want to interact with those who are of my kind. That's why he keeps saying, I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be my people. He said, why? Somebody want to know why. He said, because it's the good pleasure of my will. In other words, I'm God. That's what I want. So who's to question it? I want those who are of my kind. Are you hearing God? It wasn't good for Adam to be alone. It ain't good for me to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I want people that can relate to me. People that are just like me. My children that can love the way I love. That can feel what I feel. Glory to God. And I'm going to leave you in this uh, human body, this earthen vessel, for testing to see if you are worthy of the eternal kingdom I've prepared for you. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Those of you that are, hallelujah, that are not here in the sanctuary, amen, and you're, in, and you're, you're just, you know, if you got, if you got, glory to God, type them in the chat room, praise the Lord, and put them up on the screen, and we'll answer them. Amen? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you all blessed? Yeah. You, you, did you learn anything? Yeah. Ooh, you better learn, have learned something. Ah. Glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are there any questions? Time you got any questions? You understand this? Okay, good. She says she understands it. She can teach this now. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Saints, my job, uh, what, what, what I'm striving to do uh, in communicating with the Lord, what I'm striving to do is to make this simple for you. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. And, and don't despise the redundancy. I keep going. Did, even, every time I go over it, do you hear a little bit more? Do you, do you, do you hear something you might have missed the first, the first time? Amen. So, so the redundancy is good. Redundancy is good. So uh, don't despise that. And I, and I keep saying those things because I want to keep it before you. So... When I, when I come into the discipleship session, I keep going back over some things that I've already said before. I'm keeping it before you because there's, there's a place, there's coming a place where you got to be able to connect these dots. And if I go over the principles and the concepts with you, it'll make it easy for you. It'll be a lot easier because you'll, oh, yeah. And now when you're reading scriptures, you'll read from those perspectives. You'll read from that, from, from that conceptual uh, perspective that I've given you of what salvation really is. Amen? She has a question. Give her a microphone, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, that, a scripture that I've heard people use a lot to support the dual nature also is Galatians 5 and 17. So, with what... The spirit was against the flesh. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, how how would you explain that one? Because I know you stated before, like when somebody brings a scripture to you, you say deal with that scripture. Right. So when they say specifically how it says the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and that they're contrary one to another, how do we explain that given what we've learned the way we explain it is by putting it in the context in which it's written. 
It's Galatians, the fifth chapter, I believe. Um, and let's back up to uh, let's go let me sh let's put it back in the context in which it's written. Let's read now, first of all, remember Paul started out in this in this um, book saying, "O ye foolish who Galatians. Galatians, who has done what? bewitched you, right? Okay, so apparently they were moving off course. He said they started out in the spirit, but now they back over here in Judaism. He said, you, the, 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 it, you know, the law didn't save you. The Holy Ghost is what saved you. Why are you going back to the law? Right? So that's where they were. Now, if you go into the, the fifth chapter and he's chastising them. He's chastising them. Look in the, I'm going to start reading at the sixth verse. And you guys can put it up on the screen. I'm going to start reading at the sixth verse. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you? This is the subject matter. Who's hindering you? What's hindering you? This is, this is what he's about to talk about from, from this verse to the end. He's about to say, what's hindering you you did run well who did hinder you that you should not do what obey the truth he's chastising them this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you glory to God this, this thing that you're persuaded in didn't come from God a little what a little leaven does what leaven the whole lump Glory to God. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise, what? Minded, but he that troubles you. In other words, the troublemakers. That's what he's saying. The, the people that are among you that are preaching something different than what I'm preaching. The Judaizers. He that troubles you, but he that trouble you shall bear his judgment. Whoever he be, don't care who it is, if it's your pastor. If he preaching something different and he's counseling something different than what I preach and it's causing division, he's, take, he's taking you back to Judaism, taking you back to the law. You are Gentiles that were born in the spirit and now, you've tried, now they're trying to yoke you with the law. That persuasion doesn't come from God. Something's wrong with you. Why are you listening to that? Listen to what he said here. And I, brethren... If I yet preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? Then, it, then is the offense of the cross ceased? I would they were who? I wish they were even cut off, which do what? Trouble you. That's the subject matter. The people that are causing 